This is your host, Apnil Bharatiya, and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us once again Puneet Gupta, CEO and founder of Amberflow. Puneet, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be back, Swapnil. Always good to connect back with you. Today's topic is going to be something of great interest to a lot of folks because almost all of us, especially in tech, we are talking about generative AI, uh, Gen AI, or mostly we talk about chat, GPT, and all those things. And we have, a, I have been recording videos almost on daily basis where companies are moving a lot of things in production before we talk about this specific announcement that you folks are coming out with what i do want to understand or hear from you is how are you seeing because oftentimes we do see blip in the radars we see a lot of hype around a certain technologies but our six months nobody talks about that nfts are a good example uh, but when it comes to gen ai what are, what are your feelings that is it hype or is it something real which is like almost as big as Docker containers or Kubernetes or Linux kernel? Obviously, there's an active debate going on uh, about precisely that, you know, whether this is this is interim, maybe this is some kind of a fad or short term. And because, you know, we've seen some of these uh, in the past, right, where we thought there was going to be sort of a long term game changer. I think people got excited about crypto, blockchain, you know, a few others. And, you know, They've had an impact, but I think generally now uh, the consensus is that yes, this is uh, this is widely disruptive and this is widely impactful. Uh, I think you know uh, not just hearsay or narratives. I think data is starting to come out where uh, folks are experiencing uh, what this technology can do and then how it can ripple through pretty much any use case that we can think of. Uh, having said that, yes, yeah, still sort of a little bit early innings. Uh, I think, you know, we've seen some powerful, I would say, you know, consumer type use cases. Uh, but I think it's just a matter of time before we start to see a huge, huge onslaught on the B2B side. Okay, just like in any technology, it takes a little while to, for sort of the maturation and for it to kind of propagate. And as we're seeing, the stack is sort of still building out. Right, you have the foundational layer, and then you know, then you have additional layer that is uh, that are being built on top. So a lot of tooling is coming in place. So, and you know, I mean, I am in the Bay Area. This is considered ground zero for AI ML, um, and uh, I can tell you, I think yes, um, I think some of the best minds are talking about the fact that this is transformative, and this is here to stay, and this is going to be just as big as I, I mean, Kubernetes cloud computing sort of in, in that caliber, even beyond that. As uh, organizations, you know, everybody, they get excited about the new shiny object. We, you know, we moved to, everybody moved to cloud and now we are like dealing with the cloud complexity. We are dealing with the cloud cost. So when it comes to, once again, generative AI, what are the challenges that you see? I'm not talking about the technical challenges, but once again, the challenge of scaling, challenges of cost. One of the things that I think folks are going to find, um, where the landscape has changed or you know how they have traditionally approached development product development feature development in the case of uh, ai ml and then you know the particular form of ai ml that we're all talking about which is generative ai uh, on the backs of llms i think one of those things that um, that we have seen and again just a little bit uh, fortunate from having some experience uh, in the past of working at some large cloud providers this is, um, and as you sort of called out, you know, sometimes you get kind of all wrapped up around some cool new technology. But if you figure out what your use case is and that value vector, which I think most many companies are starting to figure out, right? I mean, we've seen, as I said, on the consumer side, uh, what the prompt base uh, interaction is, right? And just about every B2B company is thinking how they can leverage that into their products and services. Okay, so that's kind of the how. Uh, it's going to transform and change uh, your product offering, right? Now, one of the things uh, that's going to be different in that life cycle, in that implementation, as companies move towards that end goal, is sort of the monetization aspect of generative AI and LLMs, right? So let me sort of uh, contrast and compare. In the traditional world, prior to generative AI or LLMs or any form of AI ML that was part of your technology stack. Most of the monetization models were sort of, you know, what I call old school fixed subscription, right? $50 per user per month, seat-based license, user-based license. AI 
ML, generative AI, chat GPT, LLM, really just turns it on its head, right? You can no longer go on with a fixed model because by default, anything AI ML is usage-based, right? Whether you are using your own models uh, that are layered on top of foundational models, everything is gonna come to you in the form of a consumption unit. Right, Chad GPT uses the form of something that they call tokens that they charge you based on what kind of query that you're sending into the Chad GPT model. So you're gonna to have to very quickly get ahead of this and start tracking. And uh, what I'm getting at is compared to sort of the old school to new school way of implementation, you have to think about this right from the outset. You can no longer think about monetization as, let me get the technology built and then I'll hand it over to an accounting team or a finance team or even a sales team to come up with my monetization strategy, that will no longer work. You have to bake it in as part of your development process. Right? So I think most companies are discovering it. Some unfortunately will maybe discover it on the end of it, and I think they're gonna to have to backtrack. And we are certainly evangelizing that just from our past experience, you have to start tackling this right from the outset as when you start to incorporate uh, LLMs into your products and services. So if I'm not wrong, uh what you folks are working on is not for the users, but it's for the uh, folks who offer uh, AI-based solutions. So the usage, they can monetize from the from the usage of, is it correct? 100%, yeah. Because, you know, that's basically like, we like to say, we're kind of bringing them full circle, right? As you just said, okay, a lot of euphoria, a lot of excitement about generative AI, LLMs. I don't think there's any company left on the planet that hasn't gotten into a room with a set of PMs and engineers and, and have a, had, had a session about, okay, how do I bring in some flavor of LLMs into my product or services? I think every company has had that discussion, right? So everybody's roadmap, everybody's roadmap is, uh, has been impacted, right? They're thinking about how to do that. And all of that is great, right? You're thinking about, you know, what that experience is going to be like for your users, for your customers, okay, but, which is great. So go down that path but don't overlook the monetization aspect, okay? Which is what we're helping with. You know, I, I sort of have this great analogy I thought of a few days back. Uh, you'd remember sort of the, the big old California gold rush. And, you know, uh, it was said that, you know, don't show up to the gold rush without a shovel, right? So everybody's making a mad dash here for generative AI and LLM, but uh, don't overlook the monetization aspect. Don't look at it for sort of on the far end of it when you get done. No, you have to bake it in. So on that end, we are providing a monetization platform for generative AI and LLMs. So any SaaS company that wants to monetize their AI ML, we have a turnkey offering where we enable you to meter and usage track what you are using of your underlying LLM and generative AI model. So first ability to track that, because if you think about it, you know, you want to track number of tokens consumed, latency on the query, user feedback, number of prompts, all of those things will need to be metered. And then you want to probably do some kind of a markup over those transactions and then charge your customers appropriately based on usage and consumption. So we're providing a turnkey platform where they can do all of that and then generate on-demand real-time metered invoicing and billing for a generative AI chat GPT-based product and service. As you folks are working on this extension of your platform, I want to. I'm curious that, what was the driver behind it? Is it like the the way you work with your customers, or you saw, hey, these are the trends that are happening in this space? I'm just like trying to imagine the origin yeah. of that. How you came up, the hey, we have to do that. I'm so glad you asked because, uh, you know, and you and I have chatted on a couple of occasions, and you kind of know our story, right? We have been very bullish on the fact that, I mean, we we just hold a steadfast view. We've held it for a long time that the world is going to shift to a usage-based pricing and billing model, okay? Now, having said that, Swapnil, I think, you know, maybe when you and I first chatted already maybe a year back, maybe longer, uh, not everybody was on that bandwagon, right? I mean, I and I know, I remember a time three years back when we started the company, you know, it was still kind of half and half. I mean, not many folks uh, kind of got around to it. In fact, um, one of the things that, where we did have alignment on, folks said, yeah, okay, I could see infrastructure and platform type companies or solutions going down the path of usage-based pricing and billing. But many folks sort of held out that, you know, traditional SaaS applications, sort of the top, layer, top tier of the technology stack, 
that is going to be a holdout. You know, many folks said that, you know, I don't see how that, you know, how I see Salesforce uh, shifting to a usage-based pricing and billing model. Well, tell you what, uh, we had held the view that it will. Right now, two years ago, I could not tell you what would be the catalyst for that. We just had, you know, we knew that it was it's inevitable, and we've talked about why it was inevitable, because cloud is elastic, and ultimately that elasticity will you know, transcend through your technology stack into uh, how you sell your products and services. Well, guess what, Swapnil? The catalyst ended up being generative AI and LLM, right? So this thing came out of nowhere, you know, four or five months back uh, when people started to experience chat GPT. And like we just discussed, now everybody's product roadmap, doesn't matter what company, what industry, what vertical, everybody is thinking about, okay, how do I bring back this, this into my products and services? The moment you're going to bring any flavor of AI ML, you are down the path of usage-based pricing and billing. So we have this vision from day one. Our platform has the what we call primitives, building blocks, to really support this. So for us, really, it's just a very natural extension. You know, when this catalyst sort of emerged, it was simply a matter for us to build some predefined meters on the backs of Chat GPT and these uh, you know custom monetization parameters. And that's really all. Uh, so it's been really seamless, and uh, we provide tremendous value to our customers just out of the box. They can very quickly monetize any flavor of chat GPT, LLMs, custom uh, LLMs that they are building, and however they, want to, however they want to project that to their customers. If you can just give an overview when we look at Emberflow today, that uh, these are the solutions that are there part of the platform. So you are capturing, you know, as <laughs> we have talked earlier also, uh, Emberflow is where wherever the customers are in their own journey. Actually, sometimes you are staying ahead of the curve, as you said earlier, that you know people were not even thinking. So let's talk about that also. What we're enabling is um, basically an end-to-end -end modern monetization platform uh, that will keep you ahead of these changes that are coming rapidly. Right. So we are a modern platform. Uh, we're built around a foundation of metering. And uh, you know, metering is sort of a, a euphemism for usage instrumentation, but usage instrumentation done right, where uh, there's a class of primitive, and that's why it's called a metering service. It's not observability, it's not monitoring, it's not um, uh, you know logging, it's metering. So you know, by design, it is uh, built from the ground up to be accurate. Things like item potency, data deduplication, you just kind of set it and forget it. This is that one system that you want to put in place, and this will scale with you no matter where you are today with what you're metering. And a six months from now, or a year from now, or five years from now, whatever that looks like, this system will provide you a standardized interface across your enterprise, across your organization, and it will scale with time. So it is highly flexible, highly customizable, uh, accurate, real time usage instrumentation metering system, and then layered on top, we provide you what we call our billing cloud, which then allows you to really construct any kind of a modern, flexible, usage-based pricing plan that you want to expose to your customers, right? So you want to charge on any flavor of usage-based, tiered-based, prepaid, true-up, commit-based. Uh, you want to draw down against a commit that a customer pays you, you know, $10,000 upfront, and you're basically still metering on a monthly basis what the usage is, and you're drawing down all kinds of permutational combination. And on the backs of that, we enable you to then generate on-demand, real-time, metered invoicing and billing that you can then showcase to your customers. So it's a full-on turnkey end-to-end -end monetization platform. Of course, you know, you folks are announcing it today, but can you also talk about one thing is that what kind of potential use cases that you say, right, hey, these are the companies who should leverage it, or if they're already partners that you're already working on, which, which, I mean, they're already leveraging this technology. We're seeing use cases across the spectrum, right? And I think this is just, again, a testament to the fact we already talked about. I mean, every single company, I kid you not, you pick anybody, uh, and everybody's having a conversation internally with their product teams on how they incorporate LLMs into their uh, technology stack. Support Logic, one of our existing customers, uh, guess what? They already had a layer of AI ML built into their platform. Uh, they provide uh, support ticket analytics to their customers. And now they are leveling up that experience, as you would imagine, as we've just discussed, uh, with a more prompt-oriented and interactive generative AI and LLM-based experience. 
right? So they're already deploying, they're already a customer and then they're taking our extension of our platform and are going to be delivering that experience. Several of our other customers are already down that path. Like I said, you know, that roadmap discussions already have, are already have already happened. They have our platform. Uh, they were design partners for us in the extension of this platform as we have enabled modernization for LLMs and generative AI. Puneet, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this announcement. It's really good to see that you folks, as I said, are staying ahead of the curve, uh, offering these kind of uh, solutions uh, before the industry is uh, ready for them. So that's really good to see how you're kind of bullish on uh, usage based model and also getting Generative AI into that fold. It was a great discussion, and I look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Swapni. Yeah, likewise. I'm sure we'll be back again, and uh, very exciting times. So, looking forward to it.